doing a comedy about the police. I mean, who knew? Who would think of that? Somebody did. I wrote a two-page story called Police Academy. Now you've got a bunch of underdogs that there's no way that they're going to succeed, and yet somehow that they do. It really showed police officers as human beings. People just like to see authority getting their comeuppance occasionally. That's when comedy works the best, right? When you can go against those rules and you got a bunch of people who shouldn't be cops who are going to be trained to be cops. They were out of their element. This was a bunch of, you know, misfits that you went, I love them. Where do I go to register? It's a kind of comedy that it's not just one joke after the other. What are we going to do about this? It's just the characters they love. They all see themselves in one of those characters somewhere or in all of those characters somewhere. Everybody knew a Harris, a Captain Harris. Everybody had a Fackler, everybody had a Mahoney, you know, and everybody knew a Proctor. But it's also about Kim Cattrall. <laughs> it was the biggest hit the Warner Brothers ever had as a comedy up to that time. And the movie was about to come out, and we got a call from the Lad Company. Would we be interested in writing a sequel? Can you put lightning in the bottle twice? Within two weeks, they sent a director over to me. He hadn't even seen the first one. I said to myself, oh, f I had no inkling that Jim was going to be fired. Then that was it. He wasn't there that long. It was and not great. When your director's fired, it's very upsetting. When Jerry Paris came in, it was a, a strictly improv. His mood was really up and down. We didn't know that Jerry Paris was sick. When he passed away, that was, that was extremely difficult for me. Three, I didn't show up. And they brought on another guy. He shaved his entire head. L for left and R for right. They were able to work it out with Bobcat. <laughs> And I think they compensated for Jerry and sent him packing. It's like, it's great, you know. Next time. I don't remember this. Really? Wow, yeah. he blanked it all out. In Academy 4, Citizens on Patrol, now music was coming in. When Police Academy 4 came around, you know, Scott did it. I never got a call. I was totally lost. I had no identity. Boy, I'll tell you, it was tough to lose Steve. To the Academy. This was one of the most enjoyable experiences I ever had as a director. There are a lot of worse places you could be than Miami Beach. <laughs> Miami Beach, sorry. How's my hair, how's my hair? Oh, it's beautiful, boss, beautiful. We had a great story in Six, you know, this mastermind. City Under Siege really was a standalone film. It was a, it was a whodunit murder mystery almost. I liked that movie. It's Mission to Mokbo. Really? It's Moscow? There's this major uprising. Crisis in Moscow. But we were never unaware that it was sort of politically warm. And we were being shot at and all that stuff. The explosions that they were watching on TV in America, I could hear them out the window. That was my first revolution. Police Academy, the series. Hooray! It came out of Warner Brothers Television. Yeah, he was a great character to play. It was fabulous for 65 episodes every week. You know, for a year I got to go into the studio and, and be Mahoney. Mahoney here. Yeah, they didn't use us for the cartoon. I don't understand. Again. Long story, I'll tell you off camera. I made uh, 24 one hours of Police Academy. There was going to be a different audience for the show. Warner Brothers wanted to create a real stockpile of episodes. We did Police Academy light. Collection of bad timing of several different things that happened at the same time that just spelled the end of the series. Uh, oh, sorry. They brought a whole lot of laughs to a whole lot of people. It was just a complete universal comedy. Police Academy was just some flavor that was easy to digest, that people liked. It was, you know, it was fart noises and it was whoa, whoa. They're very funny. They're silly. It's an honor to be in everybody's living rooms. We became a family really fast. I was so lucky to have the time I did with that cast. The directors that we used understood sight comedy. It was the funniest group of people in the world, led by the funniest director I've ever worked with in my life. If he'd have said kill, you'd have picked up a knife. It was tough. <laughs> <laughs> See, they were fun. <laughs> and that's the story of my life. <laughs>